Today is April 14th, and that brings us to the second day of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Day one has just concluded, and it has been a very interesting start to the playoffs so far. Let's start things off with the first game of this year's playoffs, Detroit versus Tampa Bay, round one, the Metropolitan Division M2-M3 matchup. This one was held in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, of course, getting that home ice advantage, and this was a very back-and-forth game. MVP of the game was definitely Nikita Kucherov. Started off the scoring for Tampa Bay off of a very nice feed. Slaps that home. Screened Jimmy Howard. Could not get it, but he did flash the glove on that one. Beats him up high. Kucherov also getting the second lightning goal, tying things up at two after Mike Green and Kyle Quincy, or Justin Abdulkader, I have no idea if he tipped it or not, scored twice for the Red Wings. And eight minutes into the third period, Kucherov does some heavy battling in the corners, gets it free to Johnson, and he throws it in front. Amazing shot on goal by Alex Killorn. It wasn't a super snipe or anything like that, but the hand-eye coordination required on that shot was very nice to see, and that ended up being the game winner. Lightning take this one 3-2 over Detroit. The series is now 1-0 in the favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Great game for Bishop as well as Jimmy Howard. 36 shots for the Red Wings, 34 for the Lightning. Power plays were a little bit lackluster as the two teams went for a combined 0 for 9 on the power play. Game 2 of this series is tomorrow, still at Tampa Bay Times Forum. The second game of the night was New York at the Pittsburgh Penguins. This was start of game one between the Rangers and the Penguins as well. This one, we had the big train of yellow. Pittsburgh wearing their alternate third golden jerseys for this series. And the fans, the fantastic fans over there in Pittsburgh, all decked out in yellow. It was a fantastic viewing experience, and it was a fantastic game for Penns fans. 28-year-old Jeff Zatkov getting the start as Pittsburgh's number one goalie, Marc-Andre Fleury, as well as their number two goalie, Matt Murray, both out. And a lot of Penns fans were really concerned about this, Zatkov getting the start, but he played just fine. 37 shots against, two goals against. Very nice for the 28-year-old starting off his first playoff game. 30 Five saves against the New York Rangers in this one. A lot of Penguins fans were really surprised and pleased at how well Zatkov played in this game. And of course, we can't talk about goaltending when we talk about this game without talking about Henrik Lungfis. He gets sticked in the eye by his own teammate, Mark Stahl, and the play gets stopped, the trainers come out, he gets some help, and they leave him in with 50 seconds to go. But that proved to be a pretty bad decision as Connor Sheary does some very nice forechecking, getting down low, getting the puck first, and throwing it right in front to a wide open Patrick Hornquist, who squeezed through all of the defenders on New York, putting it through the wickets of Lundqvist. He didn't start the game in the second period, and he didn't end up playing the rest of the night. He is now injured, and this is going to be a very big blow to the New York Rangers and a very big capitalization point for the Penguins. But before we get a bit too ahead of ourselves, let's continue on with what this game had to offer. Late in the second period, Sidney Crosby gets a very nice feed from Hornquist. Crosby playing sort of as a left winger in this little segment of play. Hornquist gets it free, throws it up. Crosby gets a very big stretch of ice to work with. He's coming down all by himself. Defenders are nowhere near. He comes to the hash marks, lifts it up right past the glove of Ranta. It's 2-0 Pittsburgh to end the second period. The third period saw a bit more scoring as Derek Stepan was able to net two himself, but before he netted that second one, Knuckles from the Penguins, Tom Knuckle got himself a goal assisted by Latang and Benino. Hornkvist got his second of the game from Crosby and Kessel, and with a few minutes to go in the third period, Daly and Crosby set up Hornkvist to get his empty net hat trick, his third goal of the game. The hats rain down in Pittsburgh, Penguins fans are happy. Hornkvist is now the leading scorer in the playoffs this season. Pittsburgh wins this game 5-2, the series is 1-0. 
Now on to the final game that was offered up yesterday, the St. Louis Blues versus the Chicago Blackhawks. This was a fantastic game to watch. I'm not even a Blues or a Hawks fan and I found myself enjoying the heck out of this hockey game right here. The one word story for this game is Elliot, as Brian Elliot was absolutely fan-freaking-tastic in this one. So many positional, technical saves he made in this one. So many on Taves, too. The fact that Elliot was square to almost every shot in this game was fantastic. His play, when the puck was on the side of the net, was fantastic as well. He moves from post to post very well, and he stays on the post better than I've ever seen any other goalie before. I was definitely not surprised when I saw that this game was going to overtime, but at this point I was kinda worried because I don't want Chicago to win this series. I know I had them winning, but I don't want them to win. And when they were talking about this on the panel, they were talking about how the Blues only had two shots in the third period, and that is pretty bad. They had 41 hits in the game in total, they were dominating things physically, but they just weren't getting the puck. I don't like Mike Milbury, but I agree 100% with what he said when he said the Blues are getting really physical, they're hitting a lot, but the reason they're hitting a lot is because they don't have the puck. They had two shots in the third period, and once overtime started, everyone was saying the Blues need to change their game plan, they need to get more aggressive on the puck, and that's what they did. Overtime, David Backus has it. He's scanning the goal line a little bit, he sees his teammate out in front, he throws that across the crease, but then poor old Trevor Van Riemsdyk is right there in the slot, puck bounces off of his skate, through the wickets of Crawford, the Blues take this one 1-0 in overtime with a mere 18 shots. Chicago definitely won't be disappointed with this game, and the reason I say that is because they held the Blues scoreless in regulation without their number one defenseman Duncan Keith, and St. Louis got the win that they needed. They needed to win this game. They needed to win the one game that Duncan Keith wasn't in. If they lost this game and Duncan Keith came back, everyone would just be throwing St. Louis down the drain as they have in the past. But the Blues winning this one just shows they do have some fight in them. And even though it was without Duncan Keith, they still can put up a fight. This series is 1-0 St. Louis, still at the Scott Trade Center. Game 2 starts tomorrow. And today, Thursday, April 14th, we have ourselves four series starting today. Philadelphia at Washington, New York Islanders at Florida, Minnesota at Dallas, and San Jose at LA. Four games tonight on NHL Hockey. Three games concluded yesterday. Three one nothing series leads. Hope you guys enjoyed. This video is your Paul Sinclair. Download your trolls, like, and not subscribe to Larson and Gaming. And bye.